Okay, I'm back now, but I'm still here. <laughs> There's still a little bit of dry flour at the bottom. Let me see. Okay, I think I I think I got it all. And it looks like it looks like the dough is not going to be that. Um, it looks like it's not going to be that sticky. I don't know why. I used the exact I used the exact same measurements of everything of all the ingredients yesterday, and it came out so sticky. I don't know why, but anyway, that's that. But it's better this way. Okay guys, you're going to want to fast forward this part because I have to wash my hands. have wax paper or parchment paper or foil paper you can just get okay look you you get a piece of paper towel okay and a little you do like that you cut it like that and then you put it into the butter remember when I showed you the butter okay so before you work with the butter you just put this paper into the butter okay you put it into the butter and then you have to um, hold on. You take you take the cookie sheet and then you start to wipe the butter, like put butter all over the cookie sheet, okay? Because you will not have any problems removing the cookies after you you finish baking. Okay, so if you don't have any parchment paper or wax paper or foil paper, you just take some butter and then you slide it all over your sheet and voila, your problem is solved. Okay, girls and boys. Okay, so now I am going to make the cookie shapes. It looks like corn. While I'm making the cookie shapes, I might as well tell you a story. Hey, where are you going? Stay here. I don't know if you guys have seen my, like, um, if you guys have ventured into my, um, like, a, oh, good, they don't stick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, man. I don't know if you guys have um, gone into the playlist called uh, messages to the church I talk about a lot of things that I've experienced and um, and uh, I put them there right I put I put the stories there hey get there and 
So, I have this one story of this. I have I tell a, a story of an account of something that I went through when I was five years old. You see, when I was five, oh, they're so small. When I was five years old, I experienced um, something that was very traumatic, but the Holy Spirit blocked it from, like, from it creating a lasting tra traumatic experience. So it never bothered me. After, like, on the day that it happened, it never bothered me anymore. See, I, I saw a girl. I saw a girl, I, I, I witnessed an attempted murder, okay, I saw a girl getting burned alive. Myself and, and another five-year-old witnessed a girl between the ages of 16 and, from my five-year-old eyes, she looked to be between 16 and 20. Yeah, so, yeah, I, we witnessed that. My friend and I, okay, we were living... My family and I were living, okay, we're, I'm from Ecuador, right? And so we were living in a small town at the time. And my friend and I, the one, the girl that witnessed the, because she witnessed it also, right? My friend and I, we were like playing on my parents, the, the, the property, on the front property of the house. My friend and I were playing, and then I said to my friend, hey, let's go to your house and play. And my friend said, okay, let's go. So we started walking to her house, and her house was very close by. And then all of a sudden, as we were walking towards her house, we started to hear um, very loud screams from, from a girl. And the screams were, um, they were the type of screams that were, you know, coming out of someone who was in a, a tremendous amount of physical pain. It was really, as the pain was, you know, it was, it was just, we, we just heard, we just heard like screams from somebody who was in a tremendous amount of agonizing, horrendous pain. And then I said to my friend, what's that noise? What is that? Where is it coming from? And my friend's like, I don't know. Well, it's, we, I don't know where it's coming from. Wow. And then the closer we got to my friend's house, the louder the sounds would become. And so we got to my friend's house, to the... We reached the, the front, you know, the veranda of the house, and we, we heard that, we saw that the noises were coming from directly in her house, and so we, we looked at each other, my friend and I, and then we started heading up the stairs of the veranda, and we walked into the house, and we heard that the noises were coming from the second floor, and we started making our way up to the second floor, and, you know, the... The closer we got to the second floor, the louder the screams we got. And when we reached the top of the steps, we just reached the top of the steps. We didn't move forward. We, we were right there at the top of the steps, and we saw two ladies and one girl. Okay, The girl was in the center, and um, the ladies were on either side of her. And one of the ladies was holding on to the girl to her upper arm. She was holding on to the girl's upper arm. And in the lady's other hand was a torch with a very large fire. And the fire, the lady was holding the fire to the girl's back. And um, my friend and I were like, we, we were just, we were, we froze and we were looking at this thing happening. And then, um, you know, like what was running through our minds was, what on earth are we seeing here? What are we seeing? This is crazy. And, I was terrified and my friend was terrified and all of a sudden my friend ran to the back of the room. She just, suddenly she darted to the back of the, of a, of that hall. Like she ended, she just ran forward and she hid herself in a room way up on the other side of the house in a room. She just hid herself in there. And what was running through my mind was I was really angry with my friend because she left me there by myself because even though I was terrified at what I was seeing, I still felt a, a sense of protection because I had somebody else next to me even though that friend, uh, I understood, we were both little kids, I knew that she was just a five-year-old like me, but I still, I, I still felt a strong sense of protection, you know, because there was somebody there witnessing this thing with me. And uh, just a minute. Okay, I was just 
wondering if the um, camera stopped recording. So, you know, there I was standing there witnessing this horrific thing and what I saw, um, something that I didn't understand was why the girl was not trying to get away. I didn't, I didn't see her trying to lunge away. I didn't see her trying to struggle away. She wasn't like hitting the lady. She wasn't trying to beat up the lady with her other arm because like, like I just said, like the lady was holding onto one of her arms, her upper arm, while she burned the girl with her other hand, with that torch in her hand. But the girl, you know, her, her free arm, she wasn't trying to get away, nothing. She wasn't trying to grab the torch or turn around, turn her body around or, or fall to the floor, or, you know, drop to the floor or, or, or lunge away, nothing. She was just jumping up and down, of course, in pain hysterically, you know, in, in a crazy way, just jumping up and down and stomping her feet and screaming at the top of her lungs. And, <coughs> you know, when I was seeing her doing that, what I just explained was not running through my mind. Like, in my five-year-old mind, I wasn't wondering why she wasn't trying to get away. That's something that I noticed, you know, when I got older, like when I got into my teens, because I didn't tell anybody this until I was around 16. <laughs> Yeah, and anyway, so, you know, looking back, I was wondering why the girl wasn't trying to get away. Why wasn't she trying to just run, you know, just run. She was just standing there, jumping and screaming and screaming. And the other, the other lady that was witnessing all this, she, she had, her, she had her, her hands on her hips. You know, um, in some cultures, like in my culture and in, in, in several other cultures, um, when women are preparing to fight, they place their hands on their hips and, you know, they have this, their, their expression on their, the expression on their bodies and on their faces and are, are like, yeah, I'm ready for a fight. I'm, let's go, let's go, I'm going to fight you now. Like that, right? That's, that's what it is like in some cultures. So that lady, the other, the other lady had her hands on her hips and the expression on her body was, you deserve everything you're getting right now. You deserve everything. Everything that's happening to you right now, all the burning that's happening on your body, on your back, you deserve every bit of it. Yeah, yeah, you, you deserve that. And that's what was coming out of the lady's body, like her, her expression. And I have no idea why she would ever um, be happy about watching another human being being burned alive, you know? Um, because what we were what, what my friend and I witnessed, including that lady who was with her hands on her hips, that we, we all just witnessed an attempted murder because you don't set somebody on fire and call it an accident, right? Not that it was called an accident, but but I'm thinking to myself, for anybody for anybody who, who thinks that witnessing you know the, for anybody who believes that the burning of another human, a, a, a human being who's alive, if you don't consider that an attempted murder, you have something going on in your head. There's something wrong with you because that is an attempted murder, right? Um, that's what happens when you burn somebody's body. That's called attempted murder. And you, you go, people go to jail for that, okay? That's not an assault. That is an attempted murder, okay? Because people die from severe burns. And especially when there's a, a severe burn like that, around your chest area where your lungs are, right, that pe burn victims usually die, from what I learned, they usually die from, I don't know, it's like an pneumonia or something like that. It has to do with their lungs. It, it gets gets filled up with, with fluid. Burn victims sometimes die like that. And it's not good. Of course it's not good. But anyway, yeah, so, you know, um, after... So like I was trying to say, like after after my friend ran, you know, into the bedroom, and I just explained everything that I just said about everything that I just. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm getting distracted. After my friend ran into the bedroom, right? After she ran into the bedroom, and all the things that I just explained to you, that were running through my head, were running through my head. You know, I was mad at my friend, scared out of my mind, and. I was also thinking, oh no, I'm going to get it too, I'm going to get it too, so uh, I have to figure out of a way to, to leave before I get it too, because I know I'm going to get it, I'm going to get burned, I'm next. 
I wasn't thinking about whether my friend was going to get burned. In my head, I was convinced that she was not going to get burned. I was only thinking that I was going to get burned. I wasn't thinking she's not going to get burned because she's somebody that belongs to this family. I was thinking in my head, she's just not going to get burned because she's just not going to get burned, period. That's just, that was just the fact for her. That's what I was thinking in my head at the time. Um, so, oh, what am I doing? Um, I'm supposed to... You know what, guys? I'm going to have to wash my hands again because uh, I didn't realize that I was going to have this... I didn't realize that I was going to have this much flour because yesterday the flour, for whatever reason, didn't turn out that, that much. I don't know. Yesterday I used a cup and three quarters I also, of flour, and this is a cup and three quarters, but it's turned out that it's become a lot more. So I have to wash my hands in order to um, fix the other, the other cookie sheet. So just hold on a minute, guys. You might want to fast forward this part, too. Okay. That's the cup that I dropped. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. All right, so now I'm going to put foil paper on the other cookie sheet. <laughs> okay, so now I've done that. Whoop. Okay, that's the fan. Okay, so. Can you guys see it? Can you guys see uh, that? A little bit of that. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, um, yeah, so what I was thinking, guys, is uh, like, like what I just explained. I wasn't thinking about whether my friend was going to get it, but I was thinking that I was going to get it, and then I was thinking of a way to get away from there, and I thought of a plan in my head really quickly of how I was going to get out of there, and I did that, and, and um, in my mind I was running, I was running plans through my head for how I was going to get away from that scene, and very quickly I said to myself, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm here standing here witnessing what I'm witnessing and I would like to get away as fast as I can. So I need to turn my little five-year-old body around as fast as I can, really carefully, making sure that I don't fall backwards because after all, I am at the top ledge, at the top stair of the staircase and I don't want to fall. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn around really fast but very carefully and make sure that I grab onto the, the banister very tightly, but making sure that I still have enough of a, a, loose enough, a, a loose enough grip so that when I start running down the stairs, because I plan on running down the stairs as soon as I turn around really fast and I have to run so fast and make sure that my little tiny five-year-old legs don't fall and stumble all the way down to the first floor. And so that was the plan that I did. And when I gathered, um, like I gathered, um, like emotionally, I had to gather the strength in order to do that, right? So I, once I gathered the strength to do that, I turned around, like I, 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 I played out whatever my plan was, right? I turned around really fast, grabbed onto the banister, ran down the stairs, holding onto the banister tight enough but not too tight so that I wouldn't stumble and fall 
and I ran downstairs really fast, guys. Just picture, imagine yourself being five years old and racing down um, a long, a long uh, set of stairs, maybe like 12, 12 steps, you know, like that. No, not 12. Between 12 and 14 steps, right? That's, that's a lot for a five-year-old. So you're running all the way down the stairs really fast. And, you know, by the time you got downstairs, oh, let me tell you the rest. I also thought to myself, you know, by the time I get downstairs, you know, to the first floor, I'm going to race it out of this house and run all the way home and don't stop running until I get home. So that's what I did. Okay, that's what I did. Everything that I just explained, that's what I did. I, I ran down the stairs and ran all the way home. And guys, I, I ran home and I, I was terrified out of my mind and I didn't tell anybody until I was around 16 years old. And when I told my parents, they were very shocked because they had no idea that something like that happened in the neighborhood. And my mother, um, my mother told me that she knew the little girl that I, was, I used to play with because there was only one child um, in that neighborhood that I used to play with. And um, her name, well I don't know her anymore, but her name was Sophia, but I used to call her Papia. And my mother said, yeah, I know, I know that little girl, Nancy, you used to, used to play with her, and you used to, her name was Sophia, and you used to call her Papia. And she said, but uh, Nancy, are you sure that uh, you and Sophia witnessed this thing? Not that I think you're lying, but are you sure you really saw this? Because Sophia only lived two houses away from us, and I don't understand why we didn't hear any screams coming from that house. And I said, really? She only lives two houses away from us? And my mother's like, yeah, only two houses away. So then, again, not that I don't believe you, but I don't understand why we didn't hear it in our house. We didn't hear, we did not hear the noises. We didn't hear any screams coming from the house. So it's just, it doesn't make any sense how, you know, the, the screams were coming from that house and we didn't hear it. And I said, I don't know, I don't know. All, all I know is that myself and Sophia, we saw what we saw. And, you know, that was the end of that, right? And so I asked my mother to, um, to think very carefully to see, like, to, to think back. You know, when I was five years old, when we were living in that town, uh, were there any reports of anybody dying of, a, of massive burns to their body? And, you know, she sat there and she started really thinking and, and after she, you know, she was able to go through her memory, she said, no, Nancy, there's nobody no reports, no rumors, nothing like that of anybody being injured or dying of um, horrible, whoop, horrible burns or anything like that. So, um, and my mother said that she didn't, she did not understand who that girl was because she knew everybody on the street, and she and the girl that I described to my mother and to my father, they did not know her. They they did not recognize her. So I explained to my mother, maybe this girl was just a, a visitor, you know, maybe she was just there visiting. And my mother said, well, it's possible, it's possible because I knew everybody in that house, I knew everybody all around us, and that girl was, you know, she, what you describe, I, I don't know her, you know. And so my mother was like, Nancy, who, who were the ladies? Like, she says, she's like, I know everybody in that house, but who were the ladies that were burning that girl? And guys, I couldn't tell you who they were. All I know is, even now, remembering back, I, I couldn't tell you how old they were. But to my, the best way that I could remember from a five-year-old, um, they looked to be between 45 and maybe 52, something like that. Right. So that's 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 the best way that my mind remembers. Like they they looked a lot, a little bit older, like a lot older than the girl, you know? Like I said, the girl was between 16 and, she looked between 16 and 20, and these ladies, they were, they looked through my five-year-old eyes. Um, like back then, I couldn't tell what, you know, how old a person was. Like, I mean, when you're five years old, you can't tell, in most cases, you can't tell how old a person is. But at this age, you know, looking back, and in years back, I, um, they looked now, they, remembering what I saw, they looked to be between 45 and 52. Yeah, so, and um, what else? They, 
they were so mean, guys. They were really mean. Those ladies. I mean, of course, you have to be more than mean. You have to be more than mean to, to, to take such delight in burning somebody, right? Like, first of all, the person who is burning, uh, the, the other person, that's that's psychotic, right? And the person who is witnessing it and approving of it by placing their hands on their their hips and saying, you know, through their body language and their facial expression, yes, you deserve this, you deserve everything you're getting. That That is also psychotic, psychotic right? So, yep. And if you're wondering, no, it did not traumatize me. It traumatized me when I was seeing it at the time, but it did not traumatize me um, the next day. It, it, it's just the, the effects of the trauma that I witnessed on that on the day that I witnessed the burning, it only it only lasted um, for that time that I saw it because like like I said the next day the trauma was gone and I've never been it's never bothered me so the Holy Spirit he blocked it he blocked that thing from from damaging me right because you know imagine you know a five year old witnessing something like that. And if the Holy Spirit doesn't come in and, and um, remove the trauma, that person can be damaged for the rest of their lives. Yep. Yes, that's very terrible. That's very, very terrible what happened. Well, guys, if you've ever experienced something traumatic, whether it, would happen, whether it happened to you or whether you witnessed it, you know, my... My best advice for you is just to ask the Holy Spirit to remove it. Maybe you have been asking Him, and but also, like, maybe you have been asking Him and it hasn't gone away. And I don't know what your situation is, but when we ask the Holy Spirit for something, the number one main reason for why something, why we do not get healed emotionally, even physically, is because we are carrying unforgiveness. So you need to forgive who, whomever it is that hurt you. Maybe they caused the trauma and you have to let them go. You have to forgive them because it's the only way that God's, forgive, God's healing is going to flow through you. right? So once you forgive them, then you can begin on the path of, to healing. It's the only way it's going to happen. you know. So, oops. Um... I forgot to turn on the oven, <laughs> so it's supposed to be, I think, 350 degrees, so I'm going to do that. 350 degrees Fahrenheit, hold on. Um, okay, so you might, I was going to say something else about those two ladies. Oh, yes, those two ladies, guys, they were um, very hefty ladies, okay? They were big and tall and very hefty, very plump, very strong, very sturdy, very, like, um, they were just like, they were, they were thick ladies, very plump, you know, like, just very sturdy, okay, very strong. Maybe this is why the girl could not get away from the lady because of how strong she was, because guys, um, in the first video that I just made I did describe that the girl was not even trying to lunge away I don't know why she wasn't trying to lunge away because no matter how strong a person is that's holding on to you, you your body can still lunge away if they're not restraining your whole body like if they're not restraining you like hugging you you can still attempt to lunge away right you can lunge away they may be able to um, hold you back but you can still lunge away but this girl wasn't even trying to lunge away. She was just jumping up and down, right? But the lady, um, when the girl was jumping up and down and screaming her head off, the lady was firm and standing still. Guys, she wasn't even budging. She wasn't moving. For some of you who don't understand what budging means, it means to move even like a little bit. That's what I mean by she was not budging. She wasn't even moving a little bit. Guys, the lady was just standing there. It's as if though she was cemented to the ground. That's how strong she was. And this girl was jumping up and down, screaming at the top of her lungs and stomping on the floor with all of her, her body weight and might. She wasn't heavy. She was probably about 125 pounds, you know, maybe around 5'3", 